So I've been a software engineer for around five years professionally, and I got started in this field with no computer science degree. In today's video, I'm gonna share with you my story on how I got started. So rewind back to 2016, I was a freshman in college and I was majoring in general studies. And if you're unfamiliar with what general studies is, essentially it's another way of saying that you have absolutely no idea what you wanna do with your life. I remember having a lot of these introductory 101 courses and most of them would start off with introducing yourselves and it'd go a little bit something like this. All right, class, I would like for you to introduce yourselves, please. What's going on? My name is Peace Swizzle and I'm majoring in Broology. Hello there, everyone. My name is Jack and I'm majoring in Computer Engineering. How's it going, everybody? My name is Pete and I'm majoring in General Studies. Loser. So essentially, I took a bunch of general courses and I was under the impression that once I figured out what I actually wanted to do, I would transfer these general courses into that particular undergrad program. Now, fast forward a little bit more, I wasn't really too happy with where I was at school. And since I didn't really have much of a direction, I took a hiatus from school and I started to work. Now, the company that I ended up working for was a startup company that was a software as a service company. And they essentially had a way of alleviating the need of paper documents for medical professionals. And during my time here, I worked in a support team that troubleshooted issues through a ticketing system. So during my time at this startup company, there were around 200 employees. And I had the opportunity of being a part of some product development feedback cycles. And the reasoning for this was because one, the size of the company was relatively small. And two was because since I worked in the support team, we kind of understood what were the pain points of our users. And we could then translate that over to our product teams for them to essentially create action items around. So during these feedback cycles, this was our time to bring up the pain points that we found from our users back to our product team. Now, this was the first time that I've ever met with individuals that were software engineers, software engineers in test, and also product owners. And the first thing that really stood out to me was that these people were the individuals that were building the company. They were building a product that was impactful for thousands of people. And that at the time really amazed me. And in addition to that, after speaking to them, I realized that these individuals were having a lot of fun. They were having a lot of fun in what they were doing and getting to build something that was really impactful. Now, after a few of these feedback cycle meetings, I got to learn more and more about software engineering and I got really, really interested in becoming a software engineer. Now, during my time here, I was working in support and this was definitely not my end goal as a career. And I made it to myself to do a lot of research into software engineering. And this is essentially where everything got started. I started with this whole research phase where I was researching what do software engineers do? How do I become a software engineer? What do software engineers study in school? and kind of got into the cycle of seeing whether or not this is something that I could actually do. Now, one of the things that I was looking into particularly was what were the most compelling points on why I wanted to become a software engineer? And I narrowed them down to three points. And those three points are number one, flexibility. Number two is being able to solve problems using code. And number three was the monetization aspect of it. I want to give a little bit more context on the solving problems using code. Now, I found that very, very compelling because code was not a commodity and code is not finite. So essentially, you have the opportunity all in your hands to build whatever you want. And I found that to be extremely enticing. So fast forward a month later, after I was doing a lot of research, I started getting my feet wet with multiple online learning platforms. And I started with Free Code Camp, and I also did Code Academy, and I also purchased a web development course on Udemy. Now, one of the mistakes that I made when I first started learning code was that I was trying to learn too many things at once. And one of the problems with software engineering, from my perspective, when you're learning on your own is that the internet is abundant with information and when you're someone that's completely new, unless you have a very clear path to take, 
it's really easy to find yourself lost within a lot of different material. So that's when I figured to myself that I wasn't making the progress that I wanted to make on my own. And I decided that I need some sort of structure to my way of learning coding. So during this time where I was trying to figure out what are my options to have a structured way of learning software engineering, I narrowed it down to either a boot camp or going back to college. And I ended up choosing the college route because at the time, coding boot camps were not at the maturity level that they are at today. And most of the coding boot camps that were in my area didn't really teach a curriculum that I felt enticing enough for me to want to spend thousands of dollars on. Considering that during my early stages of college, I majored in general studies, I wanted to find an undergraduate program that would allow me to transfer most of these courses that I took into that undergrad program. Now, I was looking at various different undergrad programs like computer science, software engineering, computer information systems, and also another undergraduate degree program called informatics. One of the most important aspects for me when choosing my undergraduate program was the relevancy of coursework and the amount of time that it would take for me to complete this program. Now, I wanted to major in something like computer science, but considering that I've already wasted three years of my youth taking a hiatus from school and working a job, I did not think that it was a smart investment to go back to school for another three to four years based on my circumstances. I was introduced to the informatics undergrad program by my advisor and at the time she basically mentioned that it was a computer science degree mixed with a bit of sociology and I found that to be very interesting and when looking into the roadmap for the program I noticed that a lot of my lower division courses were all computer science courses and only the upper division classes were swapped out with core informatics courses. And in terms of the sociology courses, they were mainly pertaining to human computer interaction. So in terms of relevancy of coursework, these were right where I wanted them to be at. In addition, in terms of time, this program would only take me a year and a half if I also took summer courses. So that was also a big weighing factor of my decision as well. Now, before I went back to school, most of my learning was structured around web development and throughout my undergraduate program, I took courses on computer science, data structures and algorithms, informatics, systems programming, and also machine learning. I felt like I truly leveled up as a software engineer and throughout my entire journey through school, I was really, really focused and persistent. The only things that I really did in life was coding and school. So after being in this undergraduate program for about six months, I wanted to see where I was at in terms of applying for internship roles. Now, I personally felt like I wasn't at the level to work professionally, but I wanted to see and gauge where I was at. And during this time, this is where I essentially was able to generalize a lot of the questions that were asked during the technical aspect of the interview from small to medium sized companies compared to large companies. One thing that I did was I captured all of this information within an Excel file and I would essentially write down what were the questions that were being asked by all these various different companies. And what I was able to generalize was that small to mid-sized companies focused more on the tools and technologies that you know rather than your overall problem solving capability. However, when it came to larger sized companies, they were less interested in what tools and technologies that you knew, but they were more interested in your problem solving abilities and also your theoretical knowledge. So after interviewing for a few months, I was able to land a software engineering internship where I'd be working on both client and server side web applications. And I ended up working as an intern here for quite some time until I transitioned into a larger company. Now, as you can see, my process of becoming a software engineer was very non-linear. I had to go through multiple different hurdles to lead me where I am today. And today I've worked professionally as a software engineer for five years. If you would have asked me five years ago when I was still doing support work that I'd be a software engineer today, I'd, I'd be like, no way. But here I am today giving you my story on how I became a software engineer. Now, if you're thinking about becoming a software engineer or you're in the process of becoming one right now, I want to say that this is probably one of the best decisions that I've made in my life in terms of a career standpoint. 
Now, I also wanna say, don't let not having a computer science degree or even any form of an academic achievement hinder you from becoming a software engineer. Some of the most talented software engineers that I've worked with are all self-taught software engineers. And in addition to that, computer science and software engineering in general nowadays, a lot of people come from various different backgrounds. Computer science is no longer the only way that you can break into software engineering. Here are some tips that I would give to anyone that is starting off in software engineering or is in the process of becoming a software engineer. These are tips that I wish that I had when I first started. And starting with tip number one is take the time to master the fundamentals. And what I mean by fundamentals is the computer science fundamentals. And the reason for that is no matter what domain of work that you work in, they all piggyback off the fundamentals of computer science. And it's also heavily in the interview process. So taking the time to master this is really going to help you in the long term. Number two is narrow your focus when you're learning a particular skill or technology. For example, if you're trying to learn React, Docker, Kubernetes, and Kotlin all at the same time, you're probably going to retain very little information. And in addition to that as well, it's a lot more marketable for you to be specialized in one particular tool and technology rather than to have bits and pieces of information spread out throughout various different tools and technologies. Now, I know this can be a little bit difficult because we always hear about all these new cutting edge technologies and we sometimes feel like we're left behind if we don't learn them. But what I will say is that it's a lot more important to specialize within a particular tool rather than just to try to learn everything. Point number three. Accept the fact that there are too many things to learn in software engineering. I've worked professionally for five years and I still learn new things on a day-to-day -day basis. Don't feel discouraged because you don't know something, but have the aptitude to learn it. Point number four, and this is the most important point from my perspective, and that is to not compare yourself to others. There's a famous quote that goes, comparison is the thief of joy. And this is something that I did a lot when I first started in software engineering, and it really hurt my self-esteem. And what I will say is that when you're going through the software engineering process and you're learning, focus on yourself and make little gains over time. And all those little gains that you do on a day-to-day -day basis will have compounded into something greater. So don't compare yourself to other people and focus on yourself. I wish you the best of luck if you're in the process of becoming a software engineer right now. I'm going to link in the description part of this video all the resources that I've used throughout my entire software engineering career, both from home and from school and from a professional standpoint. And if you did like the video and you want to see me create more content, please like, subscribe and comment. Leave a comment with any question and I will get back to you on that. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.